Hey everybody, welcome to BirdTech. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about some Udemy technical analysis and what would be the most bearish case for e-learning. All right, welcome back. So as you can see, things have gone down a little bit here. And I'm not sure if this is a new all-time low, but it's certainly getting there. So let's take a look at a little bit of technical analysis. And here's kind of what I've, I've figured out here. So as you can see, we have this trend line here, which was then invalidated. Then we had this trend line here, which was then inval uh, invalidated here. And now we have uh, this current trend line here. And if you can kind of look at this here, this uh, you'll see that the trend lines get less steep, right? Because like if this trend line continued, we'd be <laughs> pretty low here. We'd be like well below 10. And so you can see that's probably what's going to happen here. So these downward trend lines get keep on getting invalidated here. But let me see if I can delete all the trend lines that other than the one that we have for today. And so that there you can kind of see uh, ish what the trend line is now. We could probably say something that's more like that here. And I expect them to get more and more as time goes on to get more and more um, uh, or less steep. And who knows, maybe the, they will come back into um, a, um, a bull run here. And as you can see, there is a gap here. And that gap will most likely get filled at some point. The question is when, okay? So what I'm here to talk about today here, oh, and by the way, I apologize for yesterday. Uh, the power went out and uh, it, it eventually, it just never uh, never uh, made it to yesterday. So yesterday there was no Burtech video, but today I do wanna talk about what the most bearish thing for e-learning would be, okay? And I've talked about this before in a different video. And in that video, I talked about what would be the bearish thing for uh, learning to code here. And the thing about e-learning and, and uh, you know, learning to code and technologies, you have to understand that they're very, very um, uh, connected, okay? So, um, you know, one of the things that I saw yesterday is that between like 2000-ish and 2007, commodities went up, but tech went down, right? And then in the last 10 years, tech went up, but commodities went down. So we might be, uh, this decade, we might have switched things where commodities go up, but technology goes down or stays flat. Now, of course, 2000 to 2007, that's probably coming off the dot-com bubble high. And, you know, I've heard that we've been in a tech bubble <laughs> for a long time. And the thing is, is that we're kind of in an everything bubble, real estate, stocks, bonds, every, everything is kind of just in its own bubble, except for perhaps commodities, because commodities have gone unloved for like the last, you know, six, seven years. When oil crashed down, that was probably, you know, everything has been kind of unloved there. But anyway, um, so I do want to talk about what would be really bad for e-learning, right? So I run an e-learning business, as you know, and what would be really bad for it? Well, there's lots of things that would be, um, uh, well, I would say the number one thing is that if technology kind of just stopped being a place where people could make money, right? All the tech centers like Google and Microsoft, Apple, they start laying off technology people. Now, is that going to happen? Probably not. So that's why I'm really bullish on e-learning. But let's just kind of go through a scenario where there isn't, let's say, as much growth. Okay, so I guess we could take it from a couple things. So the tech companies have grown quite a bit over the last 10 years. Let's just say the growth is muted, right? So it's half as much, a quarter as much. So the tech companies are still growing, but not as much. That would, you would definitely translate into the e-learning world because e-learning and technology are, are really joined at the hip. And the reason why I say that is that if you want to learn a new skill and a new technology comes out, you have to do that as quickly as possible. And how do you do that? Well, you take an online course, right? It's just, it's just what it is, right? New framework comes out today, you build a bunch of practical projects so you get a job tomorrow. And that's why people take this stuff, right? You have to know what's going on, right? And that's the best way, or that's, that's the, the, the way, the reason why Udemy and all these other e-learning companies, including my own, are, uh, are in business here. So if the growth is limited and it's kind of harder to find a tech job doing anything, then you can, you can, people won't spend as much money into technology, right? Now, the other thing is that, um, you know, if we're talking about commodities and, um, you know, the opposite to kind of a tech job is, is kind of more of a traditional job. Now, of course, I am not saying that these jobs are bad. In fact, these jobs are really good and they're great for a lot of people. Uh, and we definitely need to push these more in society. So these are like kind of like plumbers, you know, construction workers, 
landscapers, like things, things like like uh, physical labor. Now, there's there's just not enough people to do that, right? And um, and these jobs are actually pretty good. So let's say you get kind of like a mid management job at like a construction company. Now that's actually not a bad job. It's actually it's a really good job, right? But the thing is, is that like in that kind of world, you while you do probably have to keep your skills updated, it's nowhere near the level of what you need to do in tech, right? Because like every time a new framework comes out, like let's say you're, if you're in like Swift, uh, you know, five and then Swift six, seven, eight, nine, ten come out, right? You, you gotta, you gotta learn how to do that if you want to keep your job. But it's not like that in the construction world, right? And like, there's a lot of jobs where you can get some kind of specialty, and then you can just kind of, you know, go to your job. And 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 these jobs aren't bad here. So like, another job that's surprisingly good is is welding, <laughs> right? But you know, so like, welding's actually a, a fairly good job. And I remember. This was back in like 2008, 2009. There was a a woman that had come from a um, a university family, and she wanted to become a welder. And then everyone didn't like that. But you know, it's actually not a bad job. So so if if that if those kind of jobs are where people quote unquote get rich, like if all of a sudden construction companies are the kind of companies that you know are are getting people rich and retiring early and all that kind of stuff. Then, uh, then you know you'll definitely start to see less people going into e-learning. But here's the thing: um, technology is all around us, right? There's always new things. Like there's cryptocurrency, Web three that's coming out. Um, you know, there's there's the metaverse. There's a blockchain automation. There's there's all these there's all these different kinds of technologies that are always coming out because that's what technology is. And there's always going to be a need for people because as soon as a new technology comes out, there's so few people that can do that. So if you can learn how to do something, you can get a job in it almost immediately, right? So it's very I, I see the bear case to be very not not very big, right? I mean a lot of things have to happen. Now on another note. Um, one thing that I think that, you know, is the pandemic over? Is it about to end? Who knows, right? But, you know, once things get back to more or less normal, I think everyone should probably spend less time on the computer. And this is <laughs> this is something for me who loves, I spend all my time on the computer. And I think that people should probably just spend less time on the computer, go out and talk to actual people. And I think the more we do that, um, I think things will feel a little bit more normal. So I th I see that as a as a, a potential headwind in the next few years for e-learning, and it's probably what we should do. If I were to be completely honest about what what should happen, is that we just people should go out and talk to other people more, spend some time in nature, do things away from the computer, because everyone is just like when you're on the computer. In, and you see some news you don't agree with, it's very easy to get enraged about it. So just go talk to people, go have parties, dinner parties, all that stuff. That's probably what, what we should do. But having said that, um, you know, the, the remote work is, is not bad. Uh, and it's probably gonna continue. And if that continues, then I guess, you know, e-learning is gonna definitely continue because you can learn. See, if you lose your job today, you could literally in within 60 days, um, if you already kind of know how to code, you can learn a new framework and apply for new jobs. Like 60 to 90 days, you're in a new, you're in a new job. And the job might even be better, right? <laughs> Who knows, right? So that's something that you need to understand here. So what would also, again, be really bearish for e-learning? Well, one of the things that could be really bearish for e-learning uh, is that if people start going back, like if things really went back to what things were before the pandemic, uh, or the before times, right? And that means like people just cram into cities like San Francisco, uh, et cetera, and New York. And then, you know, they're they're living in condos, they're, you know, socializing. Everyone wants to be in the city for the big city life. You know, that would also be a little bit more bear. Well, it would be bearish in, as to what's happened in the past, right? Uh, or, you know, like things would go back, like the, the incomes would go back to those kind of levels that we saw, right? People would still learn online, but I don't think that's gonna happen. I think the people love going to these smaller towns and I think that's a good thing. There's no reason why we crammed into the big cities, none whatsoever, right? So so all, all things considered, uh, when, it comes to, uh, when it comes to being bearish for the e-learning industry, uh, I think it's very, 
it, it would be very difficult for things to kind of completely drop off. The other thing is that um, that that we would want to talk about is how much funding is going into e-learning. If less funding is going into e-learning, then um, then yeah, that's obviously not good either. And this is one of the things I talk about with Udemy specifically, like every single Burratech video, is that they really need to make the marketplace scalable because I. I can't really go for Mammoth to go in to get funding to make courses, whereas I could do it for games or apps, right? And, you know, I'm not sh the So if, if Udemy just loosens it, its rules, then it does. It, the funding comes from, you know, the, the, the companies, right? The companies put up their advertising budget. They make money. I, it's, it's, really, it's really important here. And I wouldn't be surprised if later on Udemy... Um, you know, Udemy makes the market, it can also tank the market, right? So in any event, um, when it comes to, uh, when it comes to being bearish in the e-learning industry, a lot of things have to happen. And I, and things that haven't happened for like maybe 15 or 20 ish years, um, it, and it's entirely possible that they happen. We could be in a commodity super cycle where the best way to get rich is to, you know, start a construction company or a drywalling company. Maybe that's the best way to, to success. Um, but I just, with all the technology coming up this decade with automation, blockchain, um, you know, the metaverse, games still produce quite, um, people love playing games and the game industry has just ballooned in the last 20 years. So, you know, with all that, with all that, um, I don't see e-learning going anywhere. Um, but it could happen. It could happen, right? You know, I, I, of course, I, I could let you know here. And one of the things is like, you know, whether or not if things slow down, it's how much they slow down. And if it's how much they slow down, it's, you know, is it to the point where people start going bankrupt or other jobs here? And you'll and you'll start to know this because if the, if the Udemy top instructors tend to do something else, you'll know that like things are slowing down, right? And of course, I have a good uh, ear to the ground on all of these people. So I will let you know if any of these things do come up. So if you really like this channel, please pledge for this project here. So this project is the Complete Python Automation and Machine Learning Bundle. It is a bundle of courses, and it is absolutely amazing uh, in terms of what you're gonna learn here. Automation programmers are the least likely to lose their jobs because there's just so much work and demand for that. So you're gonna be learning Python from a beginner's point of view. So if you've never coded before, this course is for you. We got machine learning automation. We also have mobile automation and a bonus, we have web three and blockchain automation. And the more money you pledge, the more courses you get. Everything that you, like if you pledge for this version here, uh, it will go all the, you get every, all the rewards underneath it here. The rewards do stack here. So uh, please pledge for this project today. It really does help me out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in another video.